Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the um, June 2005, really old paper from Edexcel. This is the C3, sorry, the C4 paper um, for the GCE paper. And this relates to P4 now, which is, um, this is to do with integration by substitution. So we have to use the substitution x equals sine theta to find the exact value of Okay, so it says exact value of, so we have to leave it in terms of pi or in terms of third form, however it is, um, this integral of uh, 1 over 1 minus x squared over, uh, sorry, to the power of 3, 3 over 2 with respect to x between the limits of 0 and a half. So we're going to use here substitution as they told us to do. They told us what to use in our substitution. So now... When I use substitution, I like to set my work out in this particular way, which I find makes life very easy. So I first of all uh, define what y is. Now y is the whole thing that I'm integrating, which is 1 over 1 minus x squared to the power of 3 over 2. So I'm going to integrate y with respect to x between the limits that they gave us, I'll just put that here, x1 and x2, I'm just making it general here. So that's our objective when we're doing substitution, that is our objective. When we find that with those with the right limits and we integrate this with respect to x, that gives us what we want. But we have to use this substitution involving uh, sine theta here, involving another variable theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as y dx d theta d theta so it's like you write the same thing down but just put divided by d theta times d theta like kind of like that so basically what this is going to do is is going to make us have to do everything in terms of theta because we are integrating all of this now with respect to theta so y has to be expressed in, in terms of theta as does dx d theta as do the limits so i'm going to call this theta one and theta two so first of all let's get the limits sorted out so we know if x equals sine theta that means theta equals inverse sine of x. Okay, you take inverse sine of both sides, you're left with theta. We'll find what theta is. So when x equals um, a half, then we can say theta equals inverse sine of a half, which is equal to inverse sine of a half is pi over 6, 30 degrees pi over 6. Now, you should always use, whenever we're dealing with differentiation or integration, always deal with trig functions in terms of radians. Always best to deal with it in terms of radians okay always use radians when we are integrating and differentiating that's very very important so we can say that theta 2 here is pi over 6 all right because it's, it's corresponding to this one here and when x equals 0 we got theta equals inverse sine of 0 which is 0 so theta 1 is 0 so i know that this is going to be 0 all right, so I can I can actually make a start here. I'll just put here 0 and here pi over 6. Now, y is 1 over all of this to the power of 3 over 2. So I'll have 1 over 1 minus. Now I'm going to have sine theta instead of x. So this is like sine theta and just that is squared. But this bracket is raised to the power of 3 over 2. And then multiply that by dx d theta. So I've got to find what dx d theta is. Now we know x equals sine theta. So we can say dx d theta, if we differentiate this, is going to be cosine theta. Right? If you differentiate sine theta with respect to theta, you get cosine theta. So there's going to be a cosine theta over here. And then you have d theta. Now we can try to... Now everything now is in terms of theta. I'm just going to try to simplify this into something that we can integrate. And, and, and it will work out hopefully to exactly that. So we've got our limits now, pi over 6 and 0. We have 1 over, this is like 1 minus sine squared theta. Now, I think changing that to cosine squared theta is going to help us. So it's going to be cosine squared theta, but this is to the power of 3 over 2. And this is times cosine of theta, d theta. All right. Now, the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine theta, and that cubed is cosine cubed theta. So this actually gives us the integral between 0 and pi over 6 of cos cosine theta over, this will be cosine cubed theta, d theta, and then we can simplify that. That's going to be 1 over cosine squared theta, d theta, and we have here pi over 6 and 0, 
And we know that 1 over cosine squared theta is the same as secant squared theta. And that's going to help us because that's one of our standard integrals that we should know. And it's in our formula book in case you don't know. <coughs> that when you differentiate tan of something, you get secant squared of something. So therefore, the opposite integral of secant squared theta will be tan theta. So this gives you tan theta. And you have pi over 6 here. And you have 0 here. So that's going to be the tangent of pi over 6 minus the tangent of zero which is zero so tan of pi over six gives us um that's tan of 30 degrees you could use your calculator for this this is 30 degrees pi over six this is two this is one this is root three so it's going to be the tan opposite so it's one over root three which is going to be root three over three okay that is the exact value um of the answer if you don't believe me if you're not sure i like to use these exact values okay so I'm going to put uh, tan of pi over 6. Am I in degree mode? Radio mode? Yes, I'm in radio mode. I should be. That's pi over 6. Okay, that gives us root 3 over 3. Okay, so there's the answer for this question. And if you are not sure, if you want to make sure that you've done it correctly, you're in the exam and you know, you're not sure if it's correct or not, you can put this into your calculator. Okay. Um, I'm sure in the days when this exam was set, you couldn't, but now you can. So you have, um, in brackets, 1 minus x squared, the, square, the x is squared, and then you're going to have, close the bracket, then you're going to have to the power of 3 over 2, 3 over 2. Okay, that's set up. Looks a bit weird there, it's gone down. And then you're going to have 0 as one limit, and the other limit's going to be a half. Okay, let's see what that gives us. Right, now it doesn't give us the exact value, but let's hope that this is the same as that. So when you do root 3 over 3, it should be the same as 0 0.57735. Okay, so we do root 3 over 3. And it gives us exactly the same answer. So we know for sure we're correct by checking, so like in an exam, for example, you don't have the mark scheme, you're not sure, you, maybe you made a silly mistake somewhere, although if it turned out to be tan theta, it would be, I mean, secant squared theta integrating, you can be kind of rest assured that everything worked out all right, but just in case, maybe you made a mistake with the limits or something, all right, whatever, but you can make sure that you got the right answer by just checking. Now, if you just wrote down that decimal value as your right answer, as your answer, you won't get any marks for that at all, okay, at all. All right, if you just wrote down that, because and they know, the examiners know you can use this calculator to give the numerical answer. All right, so anyway, so there's the answer to question number four from the June 2005 C4 at Excel paper. Any other questions from this particular paper, if I ever get asked to answer, or to answer it, will be in the playlist that I will place um, the link for in this region over here. Other questions dealing with integration by substitution. The playlist will appear over here, the link for it. Other question, well, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can click on the link up here to help you find material. Um, it'll, there'll be a video which should help you find material that you might need in my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.